Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Kobayashi-san's Dragon Maid S episode number 5. Alright, uh, the previous episode, it was another episode full of slice of life things. The first, like, you know, the first scenario was uh, Toru and uh, that lady, I forgot her name, the neighbor lady. Uh, them going on patrols and them meeting, <laughs> you know, Elma and... Uh, Fafni by the end and like, kind of having a little conversation then we had the amusement park uh, scene where like you know they had fun at the amusement park and everything like you know they went on the ferris wheel and all that stuff and uh, like these type of things you know normal things like uh, slice of lifey uh, goodness so those were basically the previous episodes so let's see what this episode brings what more um stuff happens <laughs> like you know uh, if they like you know like uh do something uh like you know what more fun stuff they do and all that things so yeah let's get started this is episode number five of kobayashi sans uh miss kobayashi's dragon maid s and episode number five so yeah without further ado let's get started so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer over here Sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started. All right, so here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Okay, okay, what's happening? <laughs> what the? Fried tofu fritters. What? Yeah, those are just a little bit of a... Oh. Oh, we're going to... Alright, this is a bit interesting. We're going to get to see how they have met uh, before. El Mantor. all right so um i'm guessing <coughs> we're going to uh this episode we're going to see like in the opening we kind of see the little scene like this scene here and the next scene here this one i think so yeah that's elma isn't it yeah so basically we're going to see that what's going to happen like you know the backstory in this episode i i think All right, let's see. Okay, this is Toru's place, I think. Roll succession dispute. Okay. Priestess of the Holy Seas. Is this Elma? I think so. Oh. Oh. Okay, I think this is Elma, most probably. I think so. Let's see. Yeah, it is Elma. There you go. Yeah. Okay, she realized that it Elma is a dragon. Yeah. Hmm.
and there she is yeah did she run away or something i told i'm talking about toru <laughs> well true that's like all right that's a really good way of <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Judge the world of humans. Well, this is like uh, some like you know like ancient yeah this really shows that they've been like you know alive for so long like they're so old <laughs> oh boy hmm yeah she as as she said She's an old ball, so <laughs> Yeah. What? Whoa. So yeah. <laughs> well, then okay. Requiring to worship you as a god. Oh, true. Okay, so she's interfering too much, I think. All right, yeah, and that as well. Hmm. Yeah, she was just going along with, oh boy, yeah, true. Whoa. What? Wait, that was the reason? Okay. Whoa. Damn. Okay. Well. Oh no, the br dragon breath. Whoa, the animation. Oh, holy God, look at this. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Grand and pretty. petty. All right, that's better. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, yeah. Yeah, and you should not fight here. Like, the whole place will blow up. <laughs> no! Oh my god. The disparity between the two. <laughs> Toru is for Kobayashi and she's for food. Oh boy. Hmm. Well. Oh no, what the? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Boy. Mm. Well, there you go. No, she's still eating. <laughs> oh my god, she has not found what she wants to do. Oh no. <laughs> oh boy. And she's just see oh no, Toru is going to be, what are you doing here, bum, get that, <laughs> do some work. <laughs> oh my god, century. Um, yeah, she doesn't want that. <laughs> Oh boy. As I said, she can do some part time, like uh, some cafe or something, I don't know. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Alma is there, so like. Okay. Oh. Shopping district. <laughs> Perception blocking. Oh yeah, I and okay, I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. No. Yeah. Trample the boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Yeah. What? Oh my god. What the? Wait, she knows them or what? Whoa. Ah, Kanna said. Okay, they're, they're, they're friends. Okay. <laughs> oh. Opera shop. Oh, it's like a, is this a Dagashi song? I think so. Like it has small little arcade machines. Yeah, this is Dagashi shop. Dagashi shops are like sweet, uh, not sweet, but candy shop. They have little like arcade machines as well, like this. 
Oh, it's her. Okay, I remembered. All right. Oh, she can start working here, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ah, yeah, there you go, that guy's so. Ah, yeah, a few thousands of Sophia's. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> there you go. Hmm. <laughs> Voice of authority. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Don't let your son become like this, mate. Wow. <laughs> Damn, our twin tails. It's like moving. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's backstory? Yes. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, this guy in the opening. Aida Taketo. Okay. Adult man. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh, what? The? 16, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that easy. <laughs> but Kobashi was there as well, so. What? What are you emoting? <laughs> Hmm. Um. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my God. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's weird in a different way. 
<laughs> okay, she's doing everything well, I think. Okay. <laughs> More than me. Uh, flames. <laughs> oh, uh, uh. <laughs> um. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> oh boy. Well, there you go. She's doing her work pretty well. Oh yeah, from her... From her past, the, those two kids. Hmm. Okay, so that's why she chose this place. Hmm. <laughs> Take him to go, actually. Oh, boy. Okay. Brief of a Um <laughs> Okay. That? <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> ah, there you go, shooting star. All right. Okay, we had some new developments in this episode. Um. <coughs> First thing is that we got to know more about Elma and Toru, their past. And also Take, that was his name. Take and um, the Dagashi shop. And Iluri started working there. <coughs> Excuse me. So these, these two were the like, main developments this episode. all right that is it or oh, is there something else nope that's it all right so this episode uh this is episode number five and here as i said like you know we had two new developments here uh, the first thing is we get to know more about toru and elma and their backstory 
how they were like before now like you know from the map you can obviously see like you know the map that we were shown in the flashback that is way long in the past that the like you know the con like you know the continents of the world i think were not even formed properly at that time like you know like in, in like in very ancient times uh, like i'm sure like you like you know you guys know that uh, it's like there's like only one continent it kind of broke part into a lot of parts and then the continents that we have now like came into being after like you know thousands or uh, millions of years later and uh, <clears throat> so like you know or i'm not sure it was that what yeah i think that was what was shown so it, it it's like you know like the thing that was happening it way back in the past when even the continents place were also uh not proper so that time toru and Elma, they, you know, their past and their story we get to see now. Obviously, from uh, this episode, we could see that <clears throat> Elma has always been, what can I say, uh, more towards the humans, uh, what do you call it? You know, uh, she, like, as, as we know, like, she's from the harmony section. So she's more uh, willing to help humans and Toru obviously like Toru is from the chaos section but I think she's more neutral in that aspect like you know like uh, she is she won't interfere unless and until she uh, has to or something like that she's basically some, someone like that so her being in this place now obviously we don't know why she was in this place at the first place as Elma asked that why are you here you're not supposed to be here so she did not answer the question and the, from the way she was dressed I think she probably ran away or something I'm not sure but something like that must have happened and she was like wandering around and here like you know in this city she got to know that uh, like you know was staying and she got to know that someone some kind of priestess is coming and she decided to wait and check the priestess out and she thought that it was some kind of god or something but it was basically another dragon from the harmony section and that made her a little bit um, what can i say angry because she like you know she she herself was more like in the neutral you know, you know she tried to stay neutral and that's why she did not like the fact that uh elma was interfering so much in humans uh you know and what the humans were doing <clears throat> and uh now obviously I can understand why Elma was did not like that because here we see that like first we can see that they decided to kind of like you know see everything and like you know uh, when Toru decided to accompany Elma we saw that she was alright with everything because she did not know what Elma was actually doing now later on I'm sure she actually realized after journeying with her for a few years or a few months she actually realized what Elma was doing is basically she's making everyone kind of like you know she's helping the humans but that was making the humans dependent on her and like you know they're like started worshipping her as a god and everything like you know and uh, like stuff like that now obviously like, in the end we kind of see Elma saying like oh I want the food you know that's why like i love the human food so i'm here but i uh, always like i'm sure that is one reason but i'm sure like you know, i'm sure the other reason was definitely like she she wanted everyone to live peacefully and wanted to help the humans and uh, but that kind of worked in a different way because she made the humans basically depend on her more and more and that kind of makes you know like it, it kind of makes it's not a good thing to make someone very much dependent on you like people will stop doing anything then like you know like for example if if there's like a problem like uh like if it's some like very difficult problem that humans themselves won't be able to solve then it's okay you can bring that to like you know elma elma might be able to solve it uh for example like for uh, like let's just see like if there's like a drought going on for like a few months or something and like everything's dying and all like people are not getting water it's, it's hell so at that moment elma can step in and like you know help them but like this like you know if she starts like you know interfering in small little aspects like for example if some someone like something happened to someone for example something uh 
uh, what can I say? Like very mundane stuff, like a very like everyday stuff. The people are start with people will start going to Elma and ask her for help. Uh, like it, it won't actually surprise me if someday someone comes to Elma and says that, oh, you know, I lost my house keys. So can you find it? <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen. Basically, the way she was like you know letting everyone. Um, like you know ask her for favors and all so that was what was happening people are going to stop thinking for themselves people are going to stop doing anything for themselves they'll like you know they'll be going towards ruin like this so that's what toru did not like and toru in the end said that what are you doing you're making them dependent on you you know and like basically you're babying them that's what you're doing and so uh, and all, like Tolu said that so do you think that you will live here for the rest of your life for eternity just like you know uh, doing everything for the humans and like she did not like that and like you know that's as i said like you know that's dis not dis that's very wrong for both of them like for elma and also for the humans like it, it's not a good thing the humans will start becoming dependent on her and won't be able to do anything at one point of time themselves and like elma will have to be chained down into this place always <laughs> listening to the humans so yeah now that pissed toru off and rightfully so and they had a big little big fight <laughs> and uh, yeah and then like you know they kind of <laughs> stopped talking with each other i think for a few months or something and again they like started interacting and that's kobayashi basically said you know like basically you two were like you know friends who were kind of bickering with each other but at the same time you know we're good friends <laughs> and they got like you know angry at that as well they were like where like where you even listening to our story kobayashi <laughs> and started quarreling quarreling with each other again anyways and uh, as always the animation was fantastic <laughs> boy like the dragon fights are uh, like uh, amazing and uh, yeah all right and then in the next section we get to see more about ilulu and uh, what she wants to do now at the, at the beginning i did not actually realize it was that old lady's shop but then when we saw her face we i was like okay it's, it's basically her, her shop and uh <laughs> it's kanna and saikawa and all the other kids uh, what did you say say uh, hangout place yeah hangout place <coughs> now, <coughs> now usually like you know like i don't know if it's it's correct or not i might be wrong but i've, I've heard that usually these type of places like you know like for example uh darashi shops like this most of the time like <clears throat> like in animes as, as far as i've seen you know like usually like uh the person who runs it usually does that because uh they really love the fact that you know little kids come and like you know uh, like have fun there uh, you know kind of play around in, in that place and since this is a dagashi shop obviously like you know little kids are going to come and they won't have much money to spend uh and you know like and these are basically candies like you know dagashi uh, cheap candies so <clears throat> usually the profit is not as much good but people usually keep this running uh, as a, like what can I say like you know as a kind of a symbol for the older times I think and also for the fact that it's like a little place where little kids can uh, hang around have fun and like you know it's like as they say like it's like a hangout place for them and uh, like basically because of that i don't know like i i, I like you know i think I've, I've heard about this from somewhere i'm not sure where i've heard about this from but you know basically it's that like like you know not much profit comes in from this it's basically kind of like a hobby thing people like you know uh, like and also not only a hobby but also people who have been running this dakashi shop for quite a while and uh, they also keep it just because as a memory and also like you know because kids come and they have their own little place to hang out in and uh, <clears throat> like these type of, like you know these type of shops i think like you know like as we can see there's like little candies here and there in jars and all and the little arcade machines small little arcade machines and that's a dagashi shop shop so <clears throat> here uh, we can see this old lady as she says that my you like, know my leg has is not good anymore and like you know i think i should probably like and my grandson is not even interested in this so i should probably like, you know close the shop 
and when she said that the kids were like oh you're closing the shop uh please don't do that we won't have any you know place to go hang out and she was like oh no and she was like okay like i'll keep it open and like that's basically it you know like these like you know like these places are basically uh you know especially the owners keep this place running because of the customers who are like you know uh small little kids who have like a little place to hang out with their friends to meet up and have little fun eat little candies do some arcade like you know machine game, like you know gaming <laughs> and uh, like you know as they were like you know spinning the tops and all it's like a good place to hang out so <clears throat> the old lady was similar to that she she like you know when she saw the kids becoming sad she was like okay like i'll, I'll have, like you know I'll, I'll keep i'll have to keep this going and she was concerned as to what she's going to do with her leg but then in came ilulu and she said that okay i'm going to work here and here like in the beginning we did not realize actually why she took the job here but then like you know when she says later on that i took this job here basically because like you know for the kids and like you know i i love kids and i used to play with them before and like obviously we can realize what she was talking about but she was talking about that flashback where there were like these two kids playing with her and she had the doll with her and all and uh, all that stuff so <clears throat> Yeah, and then we get to see Take, the new character who we have always, always seen from the opening, and she, he is the grandson of the owner here, and uh, mm, yeah, at the beginning he was suspicious. He was like, "Why is she even doing this here? Like, you know, uh, like weird girl and all that stuff." But then by the end of it, she actually, he actually realized that yeah, like she, it's something she's doing uh, because she likes it. So. <laughs> so, like, you know, his suspicion went away after that. Mm. Okay, what else? Oh, and then in the end, we see the last scene where Toru and Elma were talking, and uh, <laughs> like, like as, as we we'll see, like you know, Kobayashi's uh, what Kobayashi said really kind of applies here as well, as we can see how both of them, like in the previous scene as well, you know, when we see like. The, the meat bun which uh, uh, Elma was eating she threw it to Kobayashi Kobayashi didn't even look behind she took it and started eating and then there was this scene where Elma was going outside that city and Toru was just sitting and then when she he, she went quite a distance stood, stood up and started following her like basically that's the relationship in a nutshell basically they are neutral but friends at the same time they're more like as you know like uh, what can I say? It's, it's like a weird type of a relationship where like, they won't interfere in each other's things much, but at the same time they're good friends in a way. So it's something like that. Like you know, uh, like usually what is friendship? Friendship is like you know, like you mess with your uh, bros, you mess with your like you know friends. Uh, <laughs> that's basically friendship. Like you know, you kind of uh, interfere in their uh, like you know life as well, and they also kind of interfere in your life and you have fun as friends that's basically friendship but here it's, it's a different type of thing where they do not interfere too much into their life but at the same time they are kind of also interfering as we see like you know Toru kind of following her and especially in the last scene where we can see they are walking on the beach um, <clears throat> they're keeping a distance like you know keeping a distance they're walking and like you know Elma kind of talks Toru kind of answers and the last, uh, what do you call it? The last statement that they talk about is like uh, Elma saying that, uh, do you know that what I will uh, wish for uh, if I had the chance to? And Thor was like, what, more food? <laughs> and Elma was like, yeah, that's it. Like, you know, you're right. But at the same time, not only for me, but for you as well. So that one statement basically sums up their relationship, as she said, like, uh, not only for her, but also for Toru. So it's like it's showing their friendship and at the same time they are also kind of not interfering at the like, you know, same time like there is a weird thing you know it's like a neutral friendship type of thing if, if, if that's something you know <laughs> like they're neutral and but at the same time they're friends so something like that I don't know it's, it's a weird kind of a friendship but still it's friendship so 
yeah and obviously coming to uh, like you know in, in this like you know in the modern society now that they are living with kobayashi and all i i think like you know that kind of like you know they also their relationship also kind of evolved and changed now they are more um what do you call it open with each other they can like <laughs> you know kind of the bickering <laughs> against each other talking with kobayashi and all and like you know all these years it kind of evolved and they are like much better friends now in a way now i think now they are more like the friends that we have like you know we kind of you know tease our friends and then like we have fights with our friends but at the same time we laugh with them that's basically it. now like, you know in, in this time that they are living now and obviously like, most of this is because kobashi is influence i think because kobashi is also interacting with elma and toru as well so you know kind of a bridge between them or something and I, i don't know but yeah and that was it I think there's something else. Let's see. Nope. Yeah, that was it. So yeah, guys, that was it. That was my reaction to Miss Kobashi's Dragon Maid S episode number five. So if you guys enjoyed my reaction, be sure to press the like button and subscribe. If you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed, comment down below anything you want to say and anything you want to let me know. I'll definitely check them out. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. So until then goodbye and have a nice day